Um, guys, welcome to an art business workshop. Um, again, my name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here. I've been doing that for going on almost six years now, which means I've been spending six years of my life uh, trying to figure out your guy's unique problem, which is how do you grow a successful art or photography business? Uh, and it's, it's certainly not an easy problem to solve. Uh, in addition to that, we run about three of these sessions a week and have been doing this basically since March before the pandemic started. And I bring that up to say, I think on a week in week out basis, I probably talk to more artists and photographers via live video sessions than just about any human being on the planet. Uh, in addition to that, we have 5,500 customers and we study their data like quite intensively. Um, who's selling the most originals? Who's selling the most commissions? Uh, who's selling the most metal prints? Who's capturing the most emails? Who's the best on Facebook? Who's the best on Instagram? Uh, who's rocking the show in their circuit better than anyone else? Who's doing the best charity stuff? Uh, who's the best at earned media and PR? And how does that all tie to sales? And I bring all that up to say, I feel very confident that we have unique insights into what actually moves art or photography in today's market and how you actually grow a profitable art or photography business. And it'll make the advice that we have very pointed and, and, and I really do encourage you, whether you ever become Art Storefronts customers or not, uh, to get some questions ready. I'm, I'm curious where you are in your business. What are you struggling with? Uh, what do you think you need to be working on that you're not working on? Uh, are you boosting posts on Facebook? Don't ever boost posts on Facebook. Or, you know, I, I, any of the myriad of questions, heard it all, seen it all, been over it uh, week in and week out. So, you know, ultimately, we mix these sessions up a little bit. We kind of we kind of do some various different things. And so the agenda for today is I'm going to have some opening remarks um, sort of on on the business model and um, just some general remarks in, 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 in general, a little presentation. After that, I'm going to end up bringing Joseph, who's on our outreach team out. He'll he'll have some remarks. And then for folks that want to um, you know, we do what's called a demo process. The easiest way to think of it, it's like test driving the car. And we do that because the car has quite literally that many features, the websites, the back end, everything else. And I think what we're going to do, depending on if people have time or not, is give you the opportunity to jump out of this session and right into a demo if you're inclined, no pressure, obviously, um, where you can actually go the, you know, the full 45 minutes to an hour and see every single solitary feature, bell, whistle, uh, you know, have your, have your questions answered. Uh, in real time and, and, and that. So that will be coming up later in the session. Um, as I go throughout the presentation, you'll see that we have a chat at the bottom of your Zoom window. Uh, that'll let you throw questions in at any point in time and, and I'll either answer them directly as we're rolling along or members of the staff will. Um, and so that, that opportunity is there for you um, as well. And then, you know, we'll open it up to Q&A on, on the very back side. But, you know, as I said, I've been having so many of these conversations with, with folks just like you over the last year. You know, the, a whole bunch of you are, are, are in this call thinking that you have a website problem or a niche selection problem or a just getting started problem or my art was selling great, now it's not selling great or I just need to know how to market or um, I, I, whatever, whatever the issue may be. And, and that might be the issue, it might not, and most likely it's not, but you're, you're all on this call because you want to grow a successful art or photography business, presumably. That's the most important thing. And you know, when we talk about that and what that looks like, you know, I've sort of come up with this concept of, call it the art selling pyramid, okay? And it is, it is fundamental to growing a successful art business in 2021 and beyond. Has been fundamental for years, will continue to be so. And I stole it from Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, but it's basically a pyramid with these various different blocks and you have to sort the bottom ones before you can move up to the next ones, right? And so the first one's physiological. You know, you need to eat, you need to sleep every single solitary day. Then you can start worrying about safety and fitness and money and then love belonging and on and on and on. So applying the same concept to what I call the art selling pyramid. And the bottom block is attention. Okay, and I know conclusively that every single solitary person on this call has an attention problem. I know this conclusively because every single solitary art storefronts customer has an attention problem. You all need more eyeballs, okay, on your work in order to be able to sell it. Even the ones that are, you know, coming up on a million dollars a year in sales, they want to grow that business to five million dollars a year. They need more attention to do it. Attention comes in two forms, owned and rented, okay? Owned attention can't be taken away from you. 
no different than owning and renting in, in, in a property term. Um, it's email addresses. It's snail mail addresses. It's phone numbers, um, especially if you're doing text marketing. Rented attention is our social followings. How many fans we have on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube subscribers or whatever social platform you're marketing in. And no different, and I'll get myself out of this so you can see the whole thing. No different than in Maslow's need, Maslow's pyramid, the physiological needs to be sorted on a daily basis. One, you need to realize that you have an attention problem. Two, you need to realize that you need to be working on it daily, no different than eating and sleeping. And in a word, it's marketing, right? And it's the biggest problem you have. And you can't even have any of the other problems, website problem, niche selection problem, pricing problem, uh, until you fix the attention problem. So once you understand this fundamentally, you're in a completely different position. And you know the, the, the analogy that I always give on these, uh, which you know I used to be embarrassed about, now I'm kind of just living up to it, do you know who some of the most powerful women are, not just in the United States, but in the entire world? It's the Kardashians. It's the Kardashians. And you could argue morally how they got there, but you can't argue with the results, okay? These women have figured out the currency of the land and its attention. And these women have amassed more of it than just about anyone else. And the point is, is that any of the one of them, okay, could decide to become a painter or a photographer tomorrow and they could paint stick figures or take out of focus photographs and probably have a $10 million business in the first year. And it's just the truth. It's just the truth because attention is the currency of the land. And what sucks about this attention thing is, especially as it applies to you guys and why I harp on it so hard, art in this business sadly is not a meritocracy. It is not a meritocracy in the quality of the work that you produce. It is not a meritocracy in the niche you pick or how many years you've been at it or how good you are at photography or any of the above. It's only a meritocracy in marketing. That's it. Because without the attention, the best work just doesn't get seen. The work that sells is the work that gets seen. So that's the attention component. As we move up to the next block of the pyramid, okay? Um, one, you have to understand the business model, okay? Two, you need to understand the importance of a collector list. The business model is you have to be selling direct and you have to be selling direct such that you retain your customer information, okay? You sell direct, you retain your customer information, that allows you to market to these folks in perpetuity and that allows you to build a collector list, okay? Now, a collector list, historically I took it from this guy, um, this book, it's Don't Be a Starving Artist um, by Wyland, the whale guy, okay? You can see it behind me. He's, depending on who you talk to, the number one selling artist in the United States and apparently it's not even close. So you know his advice is good, okay? Why I want you to buy this book, and he doesn't sell it on Amazon, so he's, and I'm gonna send you the links to this stuff too, by the way. So it's like a really, thin read of just like his wisdom about the art business. And one of the things that he talks about is this notion of a collector list. And now he defines it as anybody that buys an upwards of eight pieces over the course of their lifetime from him. He keeps getting better. Uh, his process keeps getting better. His prices keep going up and the collectors go along for a ride with him. Okay. And I've seen this play out time and time again with some of our customers and the analogy I give to how important a collector list is, okay, is, is considering you guys in the world of sales. You all, artists and photographers, are essentially just commissioned salespeople, right? You're commissioned salespeople. When you sell, you have a great year. When you don't, you don't make anything. Do you know what the collector list is? The collector list is a base salary. It's a base salary. It's a salary your business gets paid just for waking up and getting out of bed in the morning. Okay, and what do I mean when I say a collector list is a base salary in a sales job? When you have a collector list, when you nurture a collector list, when you treat them like VIPs, when you market to them in perpetuity, and you come out with a new series, or you have a gallery show, or you're having a sale, the collectors starts at a small percentage and goes up, will buy some large portion of your work before the rest of the world even gets a crack at it. We have artists occasionally on sales where 60 to 70% of the entire whatever it is, is sold instantly before the public even sees it. Why? 
because they understand the business model and they've taken care of a collector list. Now, the thing that is just so damn heartbreaking to me, okay, having these calls week in, week out, is I on a regular basis talk to people in their late 40s, their 50s, their 60s, their 70s, their 80s, and occasionally I'll get people on these calls in their 90s. And you know what they did? They did not understand the business model, okay? And I'm not, I'm not upset about that. I'm not blaming them. The world was a different place over the last number of years, but they sold well for years. They're at the top of their craft, but they never built a collector list. They never had anyone to market to. And now whatever those revenue sources were that were that existed, that were incredible for them, poof, have dried up, they're gone, and what do they have? Nothing. They're incredibly talented artists with no collector list to market to. And fundamentally, fundamentally, it is one of the most important things of the business. Once you understand the business model, once you understand a collector list and you're building a collector list, then we get into the three ways of selling art, okay? There's only three. And I believe every artist, every photographer needs to understand these three and then needs to de deploy these three in their business on a regular basis. Number one, the best way, trick question. In person, face to face, always has been, always will be, that will never change, okay? That is the best way to sell your art or photography. Problem though, you are, all of us, geographically fixed on this planet. You have to sleep and you can't have 15 conversations at once, okay? So you have to have a website. The website, though, is the worst way. It's the worst way out of the three. Now, I'm not saying the website's not important. It's incredibly important. But the best way to sell art is in person, face to face. The worst way to sell art is on your website. Yes, you still need one. Let's talk about the newest way, okay? The newest way to sell art, the whole entire art and photography selling world is trying to figure out right now, in addition to others, is via live video. It's exactly what we're doing right here. And it doesn't matter if it's in a one-to-one -one capacity. I go to Sherry's website and I say, Sherry, I'm interested in a couple of your pieces. Uh, can we jump on a Zoom and you can have a conversation with me and explain some of these pieces and show me a few of them and tell me why I would look awesome in my house and I would get to know you, whether you do it one-to-one -one or whether you do it one-to-many. Now, the one-to-many is what, what we're what essentially calling live art shows, okay? And we are, we are pioneers in this particular field at Art Storefronts, uh, we, just based on the fact that we've run more of them than just about anyone else. And, and you know, ultimately, a lot of people still think we're a website company, this and that. This is, this is the reason that you sign up with Art Storefronts, what I'm about to show you right now, about how, how we are moving the ball forward and changing the game on how art and photography is sold. So this particular gentleman is a painter, in Canada, this is his basement or garage studio, and these were some old works. Uh, we called this particular show a basement sale, and this is streaming live to Instagram, it's streaming live to Facebook, it's streaming live to YouTube, and in this particular show, it was two shows, and I'm gonna send you all of these after the fact, by the way, so you can see them. It was two shows over a period, of, that's the same one. It was two shows over a period, I believe, of 15 days, and in that particular sale, particular two sales, he sold 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian. He did not have to pay any commissions on that. He did not have to leave his house. He had a real shipping headache after the fact. He sold pieces in Canada, where he's from, in the United States, uh, a couple in Mexico and Central America, a few in Europe, one in Asia. So he had a bit of a shipping headache, but what do we do? We run these things and we figure out the trade craft. We got an incredible result with this gentleman. And the next, the next thing that you do is you say, okay, let's run it with somebody else and let's see if you can you know, duplicate those results. And so this is an artist in Kansas City, uh, she's been a long time customer and friend, um, and, and she was moving studios from one studio to another. And so what do we do? We applied the exact same concept, this live art show. In her case, she had 82 pieces in this particular show. A lot of them, because she's a painter, were like color studies and sketches. Like you can see these aren't finished pieces. But out of the 82 pieces, I think she sold 79, a little bit over $15,000, and guess what? Her collector list bought 46% of the show before it even started. I'm gonna send you this afterwards. So okay, now that we've run a couple of these things and we've proved that they work, they're really successful, what's next? What's next is we just keep running them. We keep running them with customer after customer after customer. So here's one that ran a couple, like a, a week and a half ago. And in this particular instance, uh, the artist's name is Debbie Arambula, and I'll mute that. She sold, essentially, so we're in June, we're about halfway through the year. She sold 40% of what she sold last year in this show in one crack, okay? 
in one crack. And the list just goes on and on and on about how many of these we've run. We are figuring out the trade craft. There are so many moving pieces to these things. I can't even begin to tell you. You know, you can notice she's got earbuds in her ear and the ear and the earbuds are connected to the phone, which is streaming live to Instagram. Uh, and then we are using software uh, to stream to her Facebook page and her Instagram page. I mean, her Facebook page and her in her YouTube page and her Twitter account. And again, not leaving her studio and managing to sell her work direct. And we just keep running them and figuring it out and getting better and better and better. So what about the rest of the art selling world? OK. So yours is an industry that doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of reports. Uh, this particular one is by a company called Art Basel and UBS Global Art Market Report. It's the Art Market Report for 2021. And I'm gonna send you links to this, don't worry. You can download the entire report, which is awesome, or we can go directly to the key findings section. In the key findings section, which is chapter five, online sales. Chapter five, and I quote, looks at the online art market, the rapid evolution of sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and at the development of online viewing rooms, OVRs. And it also shows the growth of the OVRs. You know what OVRs are? It's a fancy word for a Zoom call in which you're selling your art, okay? So it doesn't matter, you know, and I, and I should say for context, like these guys, they report on the top two percent of the art market maybe maybe it'll push five or six percent so the best selling artist so does that make it 100 percent relevant for everybody in this call no but my point in all of this is it doesn't matter if you are just getting started or if you're at the very top of the market the entire art selling world is realizing that these shows is the future of selling art and photography full stop okay and everyone is trying to figure it out all at once and we're better at it than anyone else right out of the gates because we're doing it more than anyone else out of the gates. We are going to run hundreds of these of the year. We are going to completely retrofit our software such that it facilitates these particular shows getting easier, better. Uh, we're ironing out the technology. What technology do you need to do it? Um, how do you do it? What's the tradecraft? How do you announce it? How do you handle pricing? Um, how do you respond to customers? What's the quickest way to get the transaction done? How do you approach shipping on the items that you're shipping direct? All of these types of questions that the whole entire art selling world is trying to figure out. So those are the three ways to sell art. And, and you know, I get real fired up on the live, on the live video one because, it, you know, going, going back to what I just walked you through with that whole process, my job running the marketing department here is to find ways of selling art that are really successful. The minute I find it, I go and duplicate it on another customer. The minute we duplicate it on another customer and get success, we go and run 50 of them, 50 of them. And so that we figure out the latest and greatest techniques and tactics such that we can teach our customers such that you will have a leg up on absolutely everyone. And that's, that's at the end of the day, your biggest problem. You think it's a website problem. It's not, you have a marketing problem. Anyway, the, the, the final block in the pyramid is everything else. Meaning, do you have a gallery relationship? And the gallery relationship's going well for you. You're earning income, fantastic. We love revenue sources. Never met a revenue source we do not like. So you keep that going, but it's in addition, it's on top of building your own intention. It's on top of the three ways to sell art and building your collector list. So too with the shows in Thera Circuit, so too with maybe your own online marketplace and that's working out for you, fantastic. Never met revenue sources that we don't like. So that's the pyramid. It is the way to a profitable and successful art business uh, in which you control the rules, you control your own destiny and it can never be taken away from you. And you know, again, I go back to my earlier comment about how many of these things I've run and how many of you guys I've talked to. And why do I bring that up? It's not lost on me that I'm talking to people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s on a weekly basis. You have the rest of your life to build and grow this business. If you understand that pyramid, if you stick to it, if you're building a collector list and you're marketing to it on a regular basis, you are setting yourself up for success for the rest of your life. You guys are not like other people. Artists or photographers, once that bug gets you, however it happens, genetically, magically, whatever you want to pre destiny, you don't have midlife crises. You don't all of a sudden, you know, decide at 40 that you want to go back and be a tax attorney or something. You're an artist for life. You're a photographer for life. You're going to be in this business until you leave this earth. And so understand the perspective of how much time you have to do this. Understand the perspective of what your life looks like if you understand that pyramid and you work on that uh, perpetually. And, 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 and it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, you know, I go back, I go back to the example 
um, let me just pull it back up, of, of Matthew, okay, on his show, those 60 pieces that he shipped without leaving his house. I mean, this guy doesn't even have sleeves. He doesn't even have sleeves. I love making fun of him for that. But he, he, he shipped to Canada, to the United States, to Mexico and Central America, to Europe and Asia, all without leaving his house. That's insane. You have the ability for a tr true international business. There's not many people that can say that. The art markets are now truly open to international business. And so when you understand the mechanics of how to get this stuff all done, it is just an, a, it's just a complete game changer. I mean, that, that's all there is to it. So ultimately, what do we do? We teach our customers how to market. We teach our customers how to build a successful business. Is the software a large part of it? Yes, the software helps. That software, the software is incredible. But more important than just about anything else is what we teach you, how we teach you to market, and how it never, ever stops. That's it at the end of the day. It's how you build a successful art business, and that what, that's what makes us so different than any other platform out there. We get pigeonholed a lot of times like, oh, you guys are just a website platform. You know, there are a million website platforms out there. And if I was the genie and I just came out of the lamp and you said, Patrick, I want you to move my website here. I'll move your website wherever you want. I'll get it done in 24 hours. It'll be the most beautiful website in the world. Your business will not fundamentally change because you don't have the website problem. You have a marketing problem. And until you fix the marketing problem, you can't even have a website problem, right? So that's the ballgame. That's what we do. Um, that's a raison d'etre, if you like, and it's what distinguishes us from everyone else. We are essentially, yes, we offer websites. Yes, they're incredible. They're the best ones in the market, but it doesn't matter. It's not enough to create successful customers. We are essentially an art business university that teaches advanced degrees and how to market and, and, and build a successful art business. And the learning never stops. There's no graduates because the digital marketing landscape is just changing so much. You know, it's funny. I got an email today. And you might even be on this call. I can't remember what your name is. I'll look you up. Maybe you are. And I might as well even read it out that I respond to it. It was someone asking, where is it? I want to read it. Okay, so it was, it was Sharice. And if you're on this call, I hope, I hope this is okay that I read this, Sharice. Hi, Patrick. I do have a question. Does one need to have a degree in fine art in order to be legit in the art business? Um, and, and, and that was essentially the question. And should she go and get one? And I was like, uh, Sharice, that's laughable. Um, Sharice, you absolutely do not need a degree uh, uh, in 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 art anything. Uh, the, the the legitimacy there is is means nothing. And I'm not anti degree. You do need a degree, but you need one in marketing. And you know what the problem with the degree in marketing? If you actually went to go get one, by the time they print the textbook, half the words on the page are obsolete because the damn goalposts move so fast. So ultimately, what do we do? We figure things out quicker than anyone else. We teach our, we, we learn them, we run them with our customers. Well, you know, the live art show is an example. We're going to end up running 500 of those this year with our customers. We're going to get better at it than anyone else. We're going to teach all of you guys how to do it. And then we're going to go and find the next thing. And that's how fast you have to move in today's landscape. If you do that utter total game changer. So that's what we do. That's my Friday rant for you guys. Um, I think at this point, what we'll do is we'll open it up to Q and a, um, I see some of you guys have dropped questions in the chat. Um, there is a couple of different ways that, that you can ask a question. Uh, if you're one of the brave ones and you have your camera on, you get to do the old school hand raise. We'll see that. I'll know you have a question. Um, if you look at the bottom of your zoom window and Juan, what did you say? It's a new button at the bottom of the zoom window. Will you just tell us what it is? Reactions. Yeah. So there's a reactions thing apparently at the bottom of, of the zoom window. And if you click on that, there's a way to digitally raise your hand. And so that way I'll know you've got a question. I'll come to you next um, and we'll unmute you and, and, and get into it. Um, if you don't want to be on camera, I totally get that. I hate being on video. Uh, uh, all good. You can, you can just keep your camera off and, 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 and we can just discuss via audio. If you are one of the folks that's watching on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube uh, and you have questions, you can just leave comments and I'll see them. I can pull them right into the stream and we will answer those directly. Now, in addition um, to me on this call, we also have Joseph, who runs our outreach department here at Art Storefronts. Uh, Joseph, why don't you introduce yourself uh, and say hello. Joseph, he knows more about the pricing and the plans and the, and the ins and outs and the numbers than I do because I'm just the marketing guy. Um, quickly, Joseph, before you do, just let me just answer one quick question. 
Um, Lucia is asking, what was the book? I'm going to move it over here. It's Don't Be a Starving Artist by Wyland. But don't worry, once, once this session concludes, what we do is we send you an email that has the replay to this video, um, should you want to watch it again. And then also every single solitary link that we mention will just be in there in a list. So don't feel like you have to take notes or whatever. You can just get the email after the fact and do the follow-up reading then. Um, sorry, go ahead, Joseph. Oh, no, I just wanted to say hi. Uh, welcome, everybody. And yeah, ha happy to answer any questions. I've been here for uh, four or five years and uh, talked to thousands and thousands of photographers and artists like yourselves. So happy to share any insights and get you an idea of any other answers for the platform and, and get you a range of pricing and all that kind of stuff here today. Mm -hmm. We also do have um, here in a little bit, we'll have a live like demo going on that if anybody actually wants to see that, you can always hop to that uh, here at like 2, 2.30, so. Just, and you have to translate to time zone. So how many minutes from now? Uh, about 45 minutes. Okay, so point is, Test drive, if you want to get on a group test drive, we're running that today because it's a Friday. You can do that. It's running in 45 minutes. In the meantime, we can get into the Q&A and start going through everything um, and go from there. So, Mark, your hand's up first. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Mark Walton, go ahead. I'll let you know when you get it, Mark. Hold on. Mic icon, bottom left-hand corner. If you're on your phone, it's a little bit less straightforward to find. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. All right, thanks, Patrick. This uh, question is Joseph still on? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so question for you guys with the so I do a lot of uh, sports figures with my art. Um, what do you mean? Do you, you have one, one back there? I want to see it. Huh? What do you mean sports figures? We we like we this? yeah we love sports figures. We love so, them. So so that's uh, if you want to see guys, there's I have four of them on my wall right now. Yeah. So I wanted to ask about licensing and how that works when it comes to my art because i do uh the logos and you know what they're what the actual player wears mm -hmm. so i wanted to ask how that works with you guys yeah so th this is a this is a perfect example of why the education piece is so critical so i want to show you i want to pull her website up hold on just bear with me okay so this gal um really interesting story let me just get her site up. So she went to KU. Um, obviously, huge Kansas. basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock okay. chalk. Yeah. Rock chalk, baby. Um, no. She is, yeah, that's no, not for me either. She is She is a diehard, um, and I'm pulling her site up here, so just bear with me. She is a diehard. Oh, no um, why is this loading? Kansas this Jayhawks up? fan. Yep. And she went to school <laughs> there, and, you know, I'll wait till this thing loads. And so she was doing her regular stuff and mm -hmm. her regular art and was sitting in a booth one day and she's like, you know, on her feet for eight hours and she sold, you know, uh, something is wrong with my internet that should be loading immediately. Um, and she sold, you know, three or $400 and she's like, what am I doing with my life? This is just not working. So she went to a, she, she approached, okay. Um, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That yeah. was the one of the ones that I saw. Yeah, so she approached KU directly and went through the entire licensing deal, okay? Inking the entire licensing deal. She's now done it a couple of times. Um, you know, she could, did like the stadium, the Fieldhouse Stadium, which is like their whatever, you know, um, basketball auditorium. And so uh -huh. it, it's such a big, um, it's such a big like subject and topic that we actually had her. So what you get is part of what you get is signing up and I'm pulling this up too. Business University. Um, my typing is terrible. Part of what you get when you become a customer is we have like a full blown online education. God, I cannot just do anything. Is it going to pull up? It's all I'm, right, Patrick. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst. No, no, no. But this gives me this. You're, you're teeing me up here. Um, I'm just going to take this down for a second. Just let me see if I can type art business. You're going to you're going to love you're going to love the answer to this because um, Alan Fieldhouse there. Someone some, someone in the chat is like clearly knows KU, right? Because he's like. Meg uses actual rock chalk in her originals. Alan Fieldhouse, he knows. So anyway, there's a course in here, what I was trying to say. There is a course in here from Meg that, that dives through exactly how to approach licensing agreements, okay? okay. And, and step by step, how, how to look at it, how to, go, how to go about it. And God, we have another artist that is killing it, absolutely think... killing it with the sports art. She's a gal, what is her name? Oh, we, April or Juan, will you look up, I think it's Courtney Wall. 
is her last name's Wall, but get her website because I want to send it to Mark too because she does the exact same thing and she is she you know likenesses and she, for whatever reason she's she's hit this niche hard and figured it out. So okay. point being, we would teach you number t number one. Oh, here it is. Good. Somebody got somebody got it for me. I want to show you this because she is killing it and this is not dissimilar to what you're doing. Very very similar. So this thing's in the chat um, for you, Mark. I want you to take a look at her pieces. You know, mm -hmm. really similar to what you do, right? Um, or or similar ish. And she, for whatever reason, I don't know how she's pulling this off, but she's got so many different celebrities that she's done. And you know, the reason I said we love this early on is because sports fans are diehards. They love oh, their sports. Me, no, oh I'm, man, I'm getting ready. I'm actually getting ready to do uh, a Cam Newton in his Florida Gator uniform when he was at Florida. Love it. Love it. Yeah. See, I'm going, I'm going back and do people that most people don't hear about. I'm actually doing a, a friend of mine. Her son plays for the Chargers. He's not a big time receiver, but he plays receiver. What's his name? I used to be a diehard Chargers fan. Uh, Jalen, Jalen, um, what's Jalen's last name? He's it's number 15. I can't remember his name. Yeah. But her son plays for San Diego. He actually had a couple of big games last year. Sad, sadly, but, uh, sadly, Los Angeles now, which is kind of when I <laughs> kind of when I kind of when I stopped are following. The, are you from this area? I, I yeah. So I, I live in Orange County, but I went to school in San Diego, UCSD. And oh, okay. I, I, I actually San Diego. So, yeah, I actually had Charger season tickets. OK, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I have a signed Ladanian Tomlinson jersey that I can pull out of that Whoa. closet in two seconds. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, that'd be great. I just wanted to learn about the licensing side just because, you know, I'm doing likenesses mm -hmm. and, and, you know, logos, shoes, and all that stuff. So, you know, that's a hard thing to get around. So that's mm -hmm. what I, you know, I've been doing a lot of research on you guys' uh, website. And uh, I eventually am going to move towards that. I actually have a friend of mine who was uh, asking me about my business plan last night. And he, I told him, I said, hey, check out this website. Yeah, you know, you don't need a business plan. You can take the business plan and throw it right out the window. Cause I know, that's what I, I, know. I yeah. told him, I told him, I yeah. had told him, I said, look, this is who I'm looking to go with right here because of the, how they do their stuff. Yeah, uh, he's looking, he's the, looking into it. So. The, you know, the thing that cracks me up about the whole business plan thing is, you know, Mike Tyson's line, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? Exactly. It's, it, you know, it's like a battle plan, right? Like as soon as, as soon as, as soon as the, uh, uh, the bullets start flying, um, you know, the plan changes, <laughs> but the, 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 larger, the larger part that I see, and again, you know, I referenced how many of these calls that I have and how many people I talk to, it's like, okay, I'm going to get started after I get my business plan done. And the minutes turn into hours, turn into days, turn into weeks, turn into months. How's that business plan coming? Have you launched yet? No, I haven't. When I get the, like, no, launch immediately. Fall flat on your face. You're going to figure out your business plan in year six when you actually have a business, right? Like, you know, and everything just changed so quickly. So, yeah. But good questions, Mark. I appreciate it. Yeah. And make sure make sure to check out Courtney's website and make sure to follow her on Instagram and Facebook, dude. Because she this this woman is a marketing wizard and she's getting behind the velvet ropes on freaking everything. She's 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 got skills. Now there's there was a good um, question from Teresa, okay, and she's watching on Facebook and she says, "I'll just I don't know if I'll be able to see it. Yeah, you won't be able to see it. I got to scroll down. Anyway, I'm a commercial photographer. Do I need to have a separate website to have my portfolio and a different one for the prints that I want to sell, or can I have this all in one?" The, the long and the short of it is you can, you, can, you can do it any which way you like. And there are strong arguments uh, uh, to doing so either way. Um, and I think it's actually Tarisha. I think I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I hope, I, sorry for hacking it. Um, and don't worry, Jack, I see your hand. But I want to just show you, give you an example. Um, so this is a customer of ours. This guy's gnarly. His name's Tim Lehman. You know, he's the full dog and pony uh, uh, Planet Earth, Nat Geo, BBC photographer, right? He's like won all these awards and incredible photos, like amazing. But he still does like a lot of these projects where he's going around the world and they're sending them everywhere. And so he has to keep two websites, right? And he also has, you know, he's old school. So he had like a huge stock archive and used to do that. Now he's like mega into motion and filming and everything else. So this is his main site, right? Which which sort of speaks and 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 takes care of his commercial um, photography stuff. And then he just has a tab on the website, fine art. You click fine art, 
instantaneously. He's routed over to his art storefronts install where he's actually selling his prints. Um, and, and that's how he does it. And so that's what works for him. But you don't necessarily have to do it that way because, you know, in addition, I, I just love this photo. He won the World Life photo, f Photography something or other in the like, entire year on this photo, which is just crazy. Um, th it's up to you. And, and, and you know, our, our website technology allows it so that you can build just about, what's, what am I doing wrong here? That you can build just about any web page you want in addition to a store. So you can, that's not a very good view of it, but you can, you can do it any which way. So that's, that's how I would answer that one. Um, it really just kind of comes down to, you know, how much business are you deriving from the site that you have currently? Is it working well for you? If it is, then, you know, let's double down on it. So that's what I would say. Um, okay, Jack, I know your hands up. I think Roy got his up before yours. So it'll go Roy, then it'll go Jack. Uh, go ahead, Roy. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? I just, I'm unmuting. To the yeah, yeah. Gotcha. 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 Oh, my, the, uh, the back room, uh, the, the background, this is, my workspace for the for the day is my New York City apartment, just uh, yeah, in the bedroom. Anyway, Roy, Roy, if um, I if I moved this green screen behind me up, the horror show that you would see behind you, the 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 dismantling that my three and five year old do to my office would scare you. So yeah. trust me, brother, I'm on your level. Don't worry. Okay, good. Um, so I have a, a business now. I'm, you know, I'm 59. Mm -hmm. I've been doing photography for 40 some odd years. Sir, um, sir, a, in, in a service capacity. No, no, I'm I'm a, uh, I'm in the tech sector. So I'm a uh, I have a search firm with a couple of people, and I, I place people in you know in, in senior sales executive roles. Oh, got it. And uh, so a tech you know, tech sales is yes. what I do. Yeah. And um, people have been telling me every time I post on Facebook, you should sell your photography. You should you know, really get involved because you know I experiment with all kinds of you know you know lenses and I get interesting blurs and backgrounds and I do all kinds of subjects and I'd like to start, you know, selling, yep. especially I've got a flower series that, you know, uh, people say they've never seen shots like it, regardless, I'm not, mm -hmm. on a, uh, not to be on a, a soapbox, but how much time do I have to invest? I mean, I have a, you know, a fairly successful business, mm -hmm. um, making a good income 59, but I would love to do my passion. Yes. And so I don't know how to scale like, okay, five hours a week, 10 hours a week. Yep. I learned that when you go into business, you've got to go and you got to jump in a thousand percent. Yep. You don't try it. You make it happen and you have to put all your time in. So my question is, have you seen someone be successful on a trial basis and then kind of inch forward and invest more time and what kind of time out of the yep. game? Yep. No, the what are the stats yep. to tell you? No, know this question all too well. So number one, um, the next time somebody says you should really start selling your photos, say, I'm selling them right now. Which one are you buying? I take cash, credit card, pen, PayPal, Venmo, cash on delivery, take, get the sale immediately when, when, whenever anyone tells you that, because that's, that is, that is a critical thing that no one does. That's number one. Number two, um, your question is, it's a crystal ball question and the premise on it is extremely flawed. And let me explain. The premise of the question is that there is some sort of magical formula that you can extract from successful people, artists and photographers, that applies to everybody in a blanket format. Variations of this question are, yes, how many hours a week do, do I have to apply? What are the best selling sizes? If I just know the best selling sizes, then I'll know what are the best selling media types. If I just know the best selling media types, th th then I'll be able to get there, right? And, and, and it's just based on a premise that there is some sort of magical formula that works for everyone. Nothing could be further than the truth. I see some of the most mind bending, crazy results you've ever seen. And sometimes people have, you know, the, the one example I use, we have a customer that has 1.3 million followers on Instagram. And we have a customer that has 5,000 followers on Instagram. Their email lists are the same size. The gal outsells that guy 10 to one. How the hell do you explain that? How do you extract the formula from that? Everyone has a different journey in this business. And so really the question that you're asking me, this is how you answer it. The hours are irrelevant. What's important? is you give what you have, but you give it consistently 52 weeks a year and you never quit. That's the ball game. No one understands that consistency is what moves mountains in this business. And what happens is, is that you've got a successful business. You're interested in doing this as a side hustle passion project. You've got three hours a week, fine. Give me the three hours a week, 52 weeks for the first year, and then we're gonna reassess and take a look at it. What will end up happening is you'll give it the three hours a week 
and somewhere around month six or seven or eight or nine, you'll start stacking some wins. And those wins come with a nice little endorphin kick. And what that endorphin kick ends up doing, it ends up taking the three hours up to five, up to seven, up to nine. That's just end of how it, how it ends up going, how I see it happen time and time again. So it's all about the consistency. You know, every single solitary artist or photographer, the vast majority of people on this call, let me know if something like this sounds familiar. This is gonna be my year. I'm gonna take my marketing seriously. And what do you do? You market real hard because you're motivated for three months. And then you didn't get the results, and so you quit. It's no different than the people that all sign up for the gym in January, and they're nowhere to be seen in June, okay? No one understands the importance of consistency in the marketing. No one does consistent marketing. And more than anything else, you know, it, 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 to use the gym analogy, do you know what our storefront is? We're a trainer. We're a trainer. That's it. You know, most artists and photographers, they're going to work out on their own, right? You're going to go run stairs at 6 a.m., right? That's all well and good until it's about 54 degrees outside and raining. Then you're not going out there and running stairs. But let me tell you, if you're committed to a trainer and the trainer is yelling at you and they're saying, you did this faster last week, changes the entire ballgame. So more than anything else, it's a consistency. And Roy, you've run a business. You know what it takes. You, you literally write the mental check of those three hours, five hours a week, and you, and you sign it and you deposit it day one, I'm gonna do this for 52 weeks a year and I'm not gonna quit. And you'll be surprised. At the end of that, you will reap the benefit. It's all about momentum in this business and no one markets consistently. No one, and on their own, almost no one. Yeah, no, no, I, I uh, couldn't agree with you more. I, you know, I do my own marketing mm -hmm. uh, in, in my business and mm -hmm. I know it's, and it's very competitive in what I do. You really have to, oh, yeah. you have to have a, a, a plan and work the plan yep. you know, daily. It's an X amount of, outbounds x amount of you know whatever it is yep. uh, there's a bar set yeah, and there are milestones to be met you know tactically and strategically and you gotta you know that's you just gotta do it yeah and, oh roy and, if uh, i could be so bold are you telling me okay just between just between us that your tech business okay has an attention problem that attention is the currency of the land in your business if you had 10 times as much attention what would your business look like it's no different. It's no different. It's the exact same situation, right? Like fundamentally, fundamentally, that's what this whole thing is about. And it's, you know, I will, I will never forget. It is one of my favorite Zoom calls that, that's ever happened, okay? And if I, April, will you find the one with the gal where her husband was on the side, okay? And he, he if, she, if she can find this, I've just got to play it because it's like, this Friday, I like telling them funny stories. So female artist, and she's like, I want to sign up for this. She's like, I'm really sold. And my husband, okay, uh, uh, he, he needs to hear a little bit about it, right? And so this is this perfectly coy woman. Maybe if April finds the video, I'll show it to you. And Okay, okay. This is, come on, you guys, this is just, I mean, it's too funny. It's too funny. I, and, she's a, and she's a customer now, so I know she'll be cool with it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I love odd questions. And he's he's uh, hearing this aspect of your business, storefronts, mm -hmm. in little bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so he's not convinced, right? Because it's another thing. I've been an artist for a long time. I appreciate and, his skepticism. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to say three or four sentences on why this is different or why this is um, uh, without going to your upper end marketing with sort of learning and doing it on, mm -hmm. you know, on your webinars, et cetera. Mm -hmm. how, how would you promote this piece? Because he's missed that sales angle. So how would, I you... how would I promote what we do? Yeah. Yeah. Artists suck at marketing. We teach them how to market. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I mean, it's just, that's it. That's it in a sentence. You know, I like the, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, that being my one or two sentence is I don't care if I take the people that are customers that are, that are knocking on the million dollar a year door. I gotta fast forward it to get to the funny are, part. Are, but the husband is having no let's say her business is what I'm doing. One person the entire oh, stick, just stick with me. Come it. Come out, come with it. And and I have a, a website and I sell stuff. Mm -hmm. And I it's interesting. I'll send it to you after the fact, but what I wanted to show you, the husband is standing on, on the side. He's like, I will not be on this Zoom, but I have some questions for you. And, he, it, and he's like, how is this different, right? And he's like drilling in on it. And at the very end of it, I got him so good. He's like, I have a business and I'm selling stuff. 
And I understand the ins and outs of it. And I, and I said the same thing to him as I said to you. I was like, you have an attention problem with that business, don't you? You have a marketing problem with that business, don't you? You don't have enough customers because you, you're not marketing. And you know what? He had me look at his business after the call. It was awesome. So it's, it, it's, it's the same for you, Roy. And, and you know, someone in your position, actually, believe it or not, if you do end up signing up, you, you have multiple ways to win. Your photography could completely flop and you not make a dime. You would get so much better at marketing. Sorry, I got to add myself back in. Thank you, Juan. You would get so much better at marketing in the tips and tactics and hacks and strategies uh, and what omni-channel marketing looks like and how to leverage Facebook and Instagram ads and how to bolt live video and streaming into your business that you would probably end up getting more ROI out of the marketing for your other business than you would in the short term in your art career. No, no two ways about it. You got a marketing problem. We all do. We all have an attention problem. That's it. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's, it really is all about, unfortunately, it is all about marketing. Yep, it just is. Your artwork could be great. You can have a storefront, a presence, and it, it goes nowhere without uh, constantly you know, messaging and exactly. uh, branding, obviously. It's all about marketing, unless you're the Kardashians, in which case you just have to keep taking photos of yourself in swimsuits and you can sell whatever you want to sell. Hundreds of millions of dollars of whatever a week, a year. I mean, ridiculous. But yep, that's it. So I, here's what I would say to you. I think you should do the test drive. I think you should look at the software, understand it. But I think more importantly than that, whether you sign up or don't, is whether or not you can write the check. Can you write the check 52 weeks a year, whatever the hours are, and commit to it? It's done. You got to burn the boat, right? I am going to put those hours in. The first three to six months are going to suck. I have to learn a bunch of stuff I've never done before. I'm going to be pulling my hair out of my head with the technical hurdles that it is. But every day it's going to get easier, right? I'm going to teach you. My staff is going to teach you. Our education is going to teach you. Our workshops is going to teach you. Our calendar is going to tell you what to do. You follow that, okay? And, and, and again, early on, like, because you're starting a business from complete scratch, right? I mean, yeah, you have some personal friends on Instagram and Facebook, but you haven't been posting in abundance. You haven't let people know that you have a business. You haven't been running any of these live art shows and all the rest of it. So, you know, if you can commit to that mentally, come on board. It's game on. Straight up. Yeah. And take my perspective thing to heart too, right? You've got another 30 years of selling 30 years. I mean, put that in perspective. That's crazy. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's 20 years, but 20 years, is a long time, you know, three to five years of grinding. And you know, you might be in a, in a 60, 40 position, right? Where 60% of your income is coming from your current business and 40% is coming from your art business. Well, that's a heck of a position to be in, right? Like, you know, a lot more stability for the ups and downs and whatever else comes in that other business. Uh, in, in terms of the subject matter, in terms of photography, I know that landscapes are popular, but is there anything that, I, I'm sure anything, you could you could make a business out of selling any any subject matter, but is there anything that, any advice there to steer me in a direction? I do a variety yeah, of so, so don't overthink it early on. Shoot what you're passionate about. Start marketing. Start getting some feedback and see what happens. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that's fundamental to a lot of our most successful customers is they're constantly pivoting. They're constantly trying new styles or new looks, new this is and new that, because what that does is that gives you the potential to unlock a market that you weren't potentially in. If you were starting from scratch and out of whole cloth, one of the analogies that I use that, that, that no one does, by the way, because it is so counterintuitive, what does everyone do? This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I'm inspired by. This is what I want to do, which does not take into account in the slightest what the size of the market is or what the demand is going to be. If I got into the art business right now, do you know what I would do? I would paint Green Bay Packer stuff. You wanna know why? Because Green Bay Packer pans are obligated by some rule that I am unaware of to buy their body weight in Green Bay Packer related swag on a yearly basis, okay? So what I did there is I started with demand and I worked backwards, right? Here's a market that's crazy and is diehard and loves all this stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work backwards. Now that sounds awesome and formulaic and, and easy to say, right? But what ends up happening is that's not how you get there usually. How you get there usually is how many arrows you fire, right? How many different styles you put up, how much marketing you do, how much feedback you get. Once you get a bunch of that feedback, then it informs the decision for what for what um, subject matter you're going to go in. And you know, one of the stats that I love to to to, to um, sort of uh, drop is Pablo Picasso, when he died, had forty five thousand pieces in his inventory. 45,000. What do you think he was doing? One of the most successful artists of all time. That guy could have that guy could have been selling toilet paper with a brush stroke on it and it would have sold. How did he have 45,000 pieces in his inventory? Because he was firing arrows. He was trying a bunch of different styles and figuring out like what what the best selling whatever was going to be. 
So that would be my that would be my recommendation. I mean, I can give you a whole bunch of different hacky ways. You know, Instagram is one of the best visual search engines that exists in, in modern times. There's ways that you can look at what's getting a lot of likes, a lot of comments, a lot of shares. But again, you know, the premise is flawed, right? The premise is flawed in the sense that there's some sort of magical formula that you can extract and apply to your business. The only one that I know that works is market consistently, get the damn feedback, talk to your customers, and then iterate from there. That's it. Yeah, I appreciate your uh, your insights. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Okay, Mark, I know you, oh, there was someone else that had their hand up that I said I was gonna get to next, who was that one? Jack Lester. Yeah, Jack, where are you, Jack? I'm gonna find you, hold on. After Jack, I know, Mark, you have your hand up again. Um, I will, I'll circle back to you last because you've already had a question and then there's a few other hands up. But Jack Lester, you're up next, go ahead. You'll have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yep, I've got you. Okay, um, I have an ethical question. Yeah. Um, when I first started painting, I used other paintings as a reference point and inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. My paintings are not exact copies, but mm -hmm. they're reminiscent of the uh, work I was looking at. And I had no intention of ever selling works of art I was doing for my own enjoyment and giving them away. Mm -hmm. What I'm wondering is, uh, is there some ethical guidelines I don't want to get into trouble with anybody of selling uh, uh, works that are no based on another another no. work. No, no. There, there's, there's a couple of different ways that you can you can approach this, right? Um, one, there's not been an original idea since Adam and Eve, right? There's a lot That's of people that say that. Thinking. Number two, it is easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission, right? Which is one I love to operate under, which means yeah. you, you start going for it. And if you get in trouble, you get in trouble and you can decide whether it's a moral conundrum for you at that point or not. Um, but no, everybody copies from everybody. Everybody borrows from everybody. I don't think you have a problem there at all. And you know, what okay. ends up what ends up happening is how long have you had this ethical conundrum stuck in your head? How many years? Be honest. Oh, um, uh, since I started painting. Yeah, exactly. I'm a very ethical guy. Yes. I am, I, I am too, um, except when I'm unethical. No, it's, it, it, it's, got, it's got nothing to do with, with ethical or unethical. Like everyone borrows from everyone else as long as, you know, yeah. if, if you, you, and you'll never know. And, and, and again, this is like, you know, the premise is that I can't tell you what's ethical or unethical. You know, you can, you can, tell, you can ask yourself what's, what's unethical in your heart. But the reality yeah, is, is the, larger, the larger point is you'll never know until you attempt to market and sell them. You've likely never done that, so you've never actually gotten the feedback. And so, how do you know? You don't know, right? It might yeah. be completely fine, and 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 you don't know, right? So, yeah. The other question I have is pricing. How yep. does one go about setting prices when it works? Yep, um, I got a ton of info on that. So let's just stay in the original zone for a minute, right? Um, anytime that you're operating in business, a, a great little sort of mental model device premise you can use is ask yourself. Is whatever I'm about to do, in this case, setting the price on my work, is it a reversible decision or not? If the answer is yes, in which case it's an extremely reversible decision, do not stress about it in one second. Set the price, go do the marketing, see what happens. If it sells out instantaneously, your price is too low, you need to raise it. If it's crickets and you don't even have anybody asking you what it costs, well, then you've got some problems there. You can lower the prices. You can have the prices high one day and low the next day because no one saw them in the first place. It doesn't matter. It's a completely reversible decision. And pricing of art is completely arbitrary. That's number one. Number two, when it comes to prints, um, we recommend a 250% markup across the board. The reason that we do that is fundamentally in art business, every art business, they all follow the same track. Regular, let me see if I can get my cameras a little wonky. Let's see. Regular marketing sale, regular marketing sale, regular marketing sale. You can't see it, I'm still doing it. Regular marketing sale, year repeats. Regular marketing sale, regular marketing sale. That is an art business full stop. The 250% markup gives you the ability to discount and have sales uh, and not eat too far into your profit margin. Anyone that says uh, having sales or, or, or discounting the work, cheapens the work, is completely naive and inexperienced. The higher you go up the chain when the pieces get 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1,000, a million, do you think the people that are buying those pieces, the high net worth individuals, became high net worth individuals from pay in retail? Absolutely not. Right, like the more, the higher the price the piece is, the more negotiation goes on. So that's what I would say. Reversible decision. You can change it at any point in time. 
Start out with the price, start marketing, see where you end up. That's it. You can raise it or lower it at any point in time. Your job, is to, you. your job is to figure out whether it'll sell, and, and that's it. That's, that's the most important task. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, it's going to go Joyce, Linda, Sherry, Marta, and then Kenneth. And then, Joseph, will you just remind us like 15 minutes before the actual demo starts so if people want to do that, they know how much time is left, they can get questions in. Yes. Thanks. Yes, we got a couple minutes. But, uh, yeah, at about 2.15, so in about 20 minutes, they'll... Yeah, just do the, do the 20 minutes because the, the time zone thing screws everybody up. It's, you know, ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, 2.15 Central, 3.15 Eastern. Yeah, what I'm saying is just say 20 minutes. And everyone knows 20 minutes. Yeah, time's on relevant. Um, okay, Joyce, you're up. Go ahead. And you'll need to unmute Joyce. Maybe I'll, I'll get, hold on, let's see. Try it again, Joyce. Microphone icon, bottom left of your Zoom window. And I'll let you know when you get it. Yep, Am gotcha. Am I on? Yep, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. okay. I just want to go back real quick to mm -hmm. when you were talking about the videos. Yes. Who shot those and who showed those? They shot them. Well, in, in, in each case, um, in each case is a little bit different, but I'll give you the typical setup. AirPods, iPhone, Instagram. Okay. Cause Instagram does not allow computer devices. Um, in some cases, the Mac webcams, this is the stuff type of stuff you learn when you try to do this, by the way. The Mac webcams that are built in are really, really good. The PC ones tend to be crappy. So if they had a Mac, it's usually the laptop and or desktop is filming that way. And the iPhone is filming to take care of Instagram. So iPhone takes care of Instagram, laptop camera, webcam, whatever it is, um, takes care of Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, whatever they're streaming on. Um, because by the nature of the fact that half of our customers are photographers, a lot of these folks have extremely high-end cameras that are all video cameras. And so in many cases, they'll get the little thing that you can plug the, that you can basically just take their SLR or their mirrorless camera and turn it into a webcam. So they're filming that way. In the ones that we assisted on, you know, it's sort of like running one of these shows, especially when it's your first time or second time or third time, it, it helps to have another person there, right? Because you're presenting, right? You need like, you know, a ghost in the machine, the Wizard of Oz. And so it's all we're doing when we assist them is kind of being like the ghost in the machine, if you like, or the, the wizard behind the comment. We are highlighting the comments. Uh, we are saying somebody's asking how much so-and-so is. Uh, somebody, somebody wants to know what size that is. Could you talk about your inspiration on that piece? Number 34 is sold. Put a sold sticker on that and all of those various different things. So that's, that's what we're doing. But at the end of the day, it's them streaming directly uh, uh, to their socials. So that's how it goes. Okay. So you teach us how to do the videos and then teach us how to put it on the streaming. And, sort of. and we teach your significant others under no circumstances can they be binge watching on Netflix when your live art show goes down. Because when that happens, we have real bandwidth issues. So yes, there's about a million things that we teach you that goes into it. Um, and we're just, okay. we're just learning all the time, all the time. All right. Well, that was my main question. Mm -hmm. um, the video part of it. So. Yeah. 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 And do, do you know, do you know, it's, it's, it's funny because one of the things that we do too is poking and prodding. Do you know what I want you to run a live art show, Joyce? Right now in that studio with your phone five minutes after this thing ends. Take your phone, stick it on a little tripod or festoon it to a something or other, an easel, press the go live button, grab five of your pieces and start talking about them. It's this simple, Joyce. Ooh, well. Hey guys, it's Friday. It it's crawl. really Thank nice you. weather here. In order to kick off the weekend in style, I just got inspired to have a live art show. So I've got three or four pieces that I'm going to show. I'm going to talk about the fact that they're ready to hang. I'm going to talk about my inspiration. This one's on maple, three quarter inch, ready to hang. Normally charge five seventy five for this, but for the show price, I'm willing to take two seventy five. Send me a message direct here on Instagram. I take Venmo, PayPal, cash on demand, whatever, and then talk about the next piece. And you know what? You know what's crazy too, Joyce, that you didn't realize. Your camera has an amazing zoom lens on it. Sh check this out. Let me just show you the detail on this one, okay? Incredible, right? Like, it's just that simple. Oh, wow. yeah. And, you know, like, contemplate what's taken place over the last year, right? How many of the various different TV shows or programs or, like, news folk that you've watched are people sitting in their living rooms with, like, a cheap wired earpiece in, right? Like, the day of having big production values and perfectly coiffed hair and makeup and all the rest of the nonsense are gone. 
that ship has sailed. No one cares. Everyone's got blemishes, right? Weird things are going to happen. Your cat's going to come running in. My kids are going to break the door down, start coloring. on. That's all part of the show. It's all part of the show. Your job is just to ship one. And that's another thing that we do too. Like, I will fundamentally tell you, you can come back to this video in 10 years. Video enabled commerce is going to forever change the art business. It is the single solitary biggest disruption to the art business in the last hundred years, as far as I'm concerned, aside from maybe G clays in which artists could easily do prints without like lithograph and serograph. And all I know is it's an elevator on the ground floor. How high up it goes, none of us will know, but it's a skyscraper and the doors are closing on the ground floor. That's how new this is, okay? Everyone's trying to figure it out. No one has it all figured out, but it is absolutely the future, and it is so damn empowering for you guys, you don't even understand. No gallery split 50-50, okay? You maintain the customer data. You don't have to load the car up and go have booth fees and schlep somewhere and eat, stay in a crappy hotel and eat crappy food and be on your feet for eight hours and then drive home and hope you made an ROI. You can do 15 of them without even leaving your house in the time it would take you to go and do a show in Thera Circuit. So it's amazing, it's the future. I want you to do one today. Uh, I, I'm gonna get your email, I want it sent, <laughs> sent to me after it's done, I will tune in. Joyce, let's do this today, today. <laughs> I will give it a whirl. I don't think I've ever used the camera on my iPad. Yep. I mean, on my uh, laptop. Yep. Well, you're, you can you can do it. You can do it right on this right on whatever you're using right now. The camera is great. I love this background. I love the way the lights coming in. I mean, it, you know, the paint brushes are. I mean, you couldn't. This 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 background right now is at a Hollywood Hollywood studio. As far as I'm concerned, let's do this. Uh, it's Joyce. a very nice studio. Yeah. Yes. Thank yes, you. It is. It looks it looks amazing. <laughs> I'm lucky. Yeah. yeah thank Was that? You. Okay, good. So that answer. I get fired up on these Fridays sometimes. <clears throat> it, uh, Pat, I was going to jump in that uh, just so everybody reminder that walkthrough starts in about 15 minutes. We'll get you a Zoom link here in a second if anybody wants to go. And, and that will, you know, Brian on our team is going to actually walk everybody through like the technology, the, the back end, how to upload an image, show the marketing uh, like vault that we have and the calendar and like templates, like all the kind of resources that you get, you know, when you do come on board here, that uh, you can actually see them on that walkthrough and he'll even break down all our pricing, which I know somebody asked in, in the chat, um, just so everybody has a range real quick, I can give you an idea uh, of our pricing with our, our current promotions. There's a one-time activation of at least $1,000 there. And then uh, after that, it's $44 a month ongoing. And uh, that's like our, our base option. Now we do have options that range up to on the high end uh, with the current promotion, it's a one-time activation of $2,700 as a one-time fee and then $59 a month ongoing there. Um, difference is gonna be more like features and bells and whistles on the, on the store and the site. Uh, but again, Brian will actually be explaining what they all are and breaking all that down. So anybody who wants to see that, again, that'll start in about uh, 15 minutes here. And uh, then we also do, just so you know, have smaller transaction fees, but our highest is 15%, and they go down from there. Um, again, a lot lower than like your traditional galleries where they're going to take like 50% and things like that. So just wanted to answer that for you guys and give you a heads up, and we'll get you that Zoom link. We'll drop it in here for anybody who wants to go here in about 10 minutes. Wonderful. Thanks, Joseph. In the meantime, we're going to keep working through the questions. Linda Lee, you're up next, and then it's going to go Sherry, Marta, and then, like I said, Mark, I'll circle back to you. Don't worry. Let's see, Linda, you need to do the unmute thing. I hear somebody, but I don't know who that is in the background. All right, Linda, what I'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to Sherry, but if you can get yourself unmuted, um, you'll 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 just be next, and I'll watch. Um, so Sherry, you're up next. Go ahead, and you'll need to unmute. Okay, gotcha, Sherry. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, my my thing um, oh, is um, yeah, I, I have an art degree, uh, but but my my really big gripe was they never taught us how to market ourselves. I, I ask, okay, what does this degree entitle me to do? I mean, what 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 do I do with it? Mm -hmm. Oh, you do art, and so <laughs> and so, or or you can be a teacher. Yeah. Well, I, I needed to earn money so i went into teaching taught for 32 years or more i, I lost track mm -hmm. retired and so I, 
when I taught, I got into everything. So now I do everything. Yeah. <laughs> and mainly, uh, I mean, my forte in, in college was, I mean, my real major was printmaking, but I drawing is, is really my forte and painting and then um, metal smithing. Okay. And so, um, but my, my daughter's a fantastic artist too. And she says, mom, your problem is that you have no style. You have no, you know, like you could say that's a Picasso. You could say that's a, a, a Van Gogh. Mm-hmm. She says, you, you, no one can look at your work and, and tell that it's yours except for your signature because it's also different. Mm-hmm. In my drawings are very different than my paintings. My drawings, you could probably look at them and say, oh, that's, you know, that belongs to her. But everything else is, is very different. And yeah, no, no marketing skills whatsoever. Yeah. I didn't see getting a double degree. You know, I didn't have the time or the money to get a double degree in, in marketing and, and art, mm-hmm. but they didn't teach us anything about surviving as an artist. No, no. And that, that fundamentally is like literally the gap that we're filling. Like, you know, I took art history classes in college, loved them. I learned a ton of amazing stuff. Um, that didn't help me build a business, right? There, there were just, there, there were no classes on how to build a sustainable business that you can pay your rent on from your art or photography. In, in many ways, there still aren't. That's what we are. That's what it is at the end of the day. Like we empower yeah. people to, to, to do that now. And let me tell you, it's like, this is an extremely nuanced uh, operation here. It is not like selling other items. It's not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or golf clubs. Art has a very, and photography has a very, very interesting way to sell it. Now, to your daughter's point, I would push back on her quite a bit on that one, but I would push back on her because I have all the data and I know, and I could debunk her assessment of why you're selling or not selling. Everyone thinks, and, and, and so many people get pigeonholed in this idea, and you know, it's like, Mark Twain has this quote, and I would hack it if I tried to get it, but everyone, it's, it's like everyone takes advice from other people's advice, from other people's advice that don't even know what they're talking about. And that's essentially where your daughter's coming from. And you are the brand, okay? Sherry Wilson is the brand just as much as whatever style you might be doing, okay? That's number one. Number two, everyone has a bunch of different styles, okay? Go back to the Picasso thing, 45,000 different pieces of work. And, you know, what was he doing that whole time? A whole bunch of different styles. Guess he what? Has blue period is cubic. Yes. Yeah. How do you think he figured out what those periods were? He tested his way. So you're not going to yeah. know which one of your styles is actually going to sell and be be the breadwinner of your art operation. And guess what? None of them might win. It might be all of them just derive a little bit of income, right? But you're the brand as much as anything else. Like, you know, everyone knows this guy is the whale guy, right? He has been pigeonholed a little bit into the whale guy, the marine art guy. But guess what? He's a big part of the brand too, isn't he? Everyone knows what his face, look, face looks like. Everyone knows what his name. So, you know, it's you are a part of the brand as much as the work. One particular style means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, I've seen so many different artists uh, uh, approach it and start in one style, and now they're on something completely different because it's the deriving yeah. more income, right? Like, and everything in between. I just call them series. <laughs> exactly 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 i do the same thing yeah 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 oh good yeah. Lin- linda figured yeah. out her her audio issues and she yep linda's yeah, in the same so boat sorry yep. yeah no, i didn't mean to interrupt no it's all good no no, no. So it, it, you know it, it was discerning the other day i went to a garage sale in my neighborhood and there was a, a lady whose daughter is a art major and um and she said all of her teachers coming from the same school district that i just retired from encouraged her not to go into art not to be an artist because she would not make any money mm-hmm. you know and I, i've never seen her art i mean i don't think it's probably because her art's not good i just think that they just had that mindset about art and yep. they it, they i mean she went ahead and, and she enrolled as an art major in college but they discouraged her terribly from yeah. From going into art. And yeah. I, I told her mom, hey, hey, give me a call. I'll tell her about art storefronts. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Oh, even even now, yeah. It's like such it's like such a thing, you know, it's like the parents like, what do you want to do? Oh, no, you're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer, right? Like, go be a doctor or a lawyer. Like y- you understand where it comes from. And look, it's not to say that um, you know, it's easy or 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 you know, it's like the most ideal career in the world. I mean, I I use might as well go into show and tell because this is an important one too. Bear with me here. Bear with me here. 
So I think I still have it pulled up. I love this book, okay? The $12 million stuffed shark, the curious economics of contemporary art, all right? And I look at this and it's amazing. And they have this stat in the book, okay? And, 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 and I did the numbers on this. And essentially, there are approximately 40,000 artists resident in London, about the same number in New York. Of the total of 80,000, 75 are superstar artists with seven figure income. So 80,000, 75.09% are the superstars with over $1 million income a year, right? Below those are 300 mature, successful artists who show with major galleries and earn six-figure incomes from their art. So out of the 80,300, 0.38% above six figures, okay? And then on the next level down are about 5,000 artists who have some representation, much in a mainstream gallery, but who supplement their income through teaching, writing, or supportive partners. 6.27% out of 80,000 that are actually supporting themselves. That's a staggering stat, right? That's a staggering stat. So I look at that and it's like, it's very easy to see that and be discouraged. And you know, I don't know how long ago the book was written, but the book's really well written. It's a really good read, T totally recommend it. We'll send you the link after the words, um, go, going back to it for just a second. But what I see that's like really, really encouraging just with our customer base over the years is this was the world of then, and I don't, I would have to look and see when this thing was published, um, just how, so it was published in 2012, right? The world's completely changed since then. And it, there represents this like unique opportunity for artists right now because what's, what's changed is the old business model of your career and how you were gonna make it was gonna be through exhibiting in a gallery or having an art agent and going down that whole road. And now we're in the situation where the old model is crumbling, right? Especially after COVID with all the galleries going out of business. The marketplaces don't work because there's too much competition. And so what ends up happening is there's this unique opportunity for the, for the artists and the photographers that understand how to market and, and start committing to it and doing it. Just by understanding the game plan, just by understanding that pyramid that I, that I showed you, that already puts you in the 5% out of the 95. That already puts you in the 5% of the 80,000 artists that are in residence in those two places. At that point in time, if you start working it, you just keep going higher and higher and higher up in that echelon. Now, will you get to the 1%? No. But do we have a tremendous amount of customers that are at a six-figure income rate already by themselves without any mainstream representation whatsoever and they're not living on their spouses? Yeah, we do. And it's empowering. And a lot of them are young in their careers. We have kids in their 20s that are in six figures already. So, there exists a unique opportunity in the market now if you understand that pyramid I referenced if you start working on it, right? And that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's our position. Can I ask one more question? Please. Do three-dimensional artworks sell uh, on, your, on your site? Yeah, yes. Everything. Okay. You can sell anything on the site. Like the, the site is all set up to sell wall art. Yes, that's like what the majority of our like sizzle, bell, and whistle features are, which you guys can see on the test drive um, that mm -hmm. they're running a few if you want. But it's just an e-commerce shopping cart at the end of the day too. You got people selling books in there. Um, obviously, all of the merch in there. You have people selling live painting classes. Some people doing extremely well. You have people uh, 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 selling tours, or at least pre-COVID we did, selling tours through the national parks, right, to teach them night photography and the likes. So, yeah, all, all of that's going on. And you look, you'll you'll never know, right? You're asking the crystal ball question, like when my mom goes and talks to her financial advisor and says, "Am I going to have enough money for retirement?" He's like, "How the hell am I going to know? I don't know what the markets are going to do. You're invested conservatively, right? You won't you won't you won't know if 3D art sells or doesn't sell until you start marketing. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Great questions. Okay, Linda, you're still unmuted, so go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, actually, both of my questions have really been answered. Boom! I love that. Uh, so I, I don't really have anything. I, I did want to uh, uh, ask about the actual, I, I understand it varies. I'm sure you have different plans and mm -hmm. such, which they did address as mm -hmm. far as the, the cost mm -hmm. of the program goes. And I will look into that as well. And then I did have, I have the same thing uh, as uh, the, the last uh, lady. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I have, uh, several. I, I work with acrylics. I work with watercolors. I mm -hmm. work with mixed mediums uh, and collaging, things like that. And everything is so different. So I don't actually have, uh, I, I don't have, and then I paint all kinds of things. I can do a whole bunch of flowers. And then one day I say, okay, we're not doing that anymore. I'm doing bottles and I'm doing glass or I'm doing fruit or I'm mm -hmm. doing whatever. How does that stuff work? uh does it work on the internet do you need to have just a specific kind flawed of uh, question the, the premise of your question is flawed 
you know you're okay. you're the, this is the this is the beautiful thing about it is no one can answer that question for you okay no one can answer for it do you know there's only one person a collective unit that can answer that question for you and it is the almighty commerce okay the only person that can answer that question is the person that pulls a card or not out of the wallet and transacts and buys the piece. That is the only okay. person that can give you that feedback. Anyone else, you know, one of the things that I love talking about, I'm going to come to your house right now, Linda, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go drive down to your local ATM and you're going to show me the button on that ATM for likes, comments, shares. People tell me my work is great. Juried art show. Okay. Last I checked, there's none of those buttons on the ATM machine that fire off cash right? Because it's all nonsense. Okay. The only thing that does is the transaction of people actually wanting your work. No one can tell you whether any of that stuff will sell. The only one that can tell you is you when you get it in front of enough eyeballs. I, you have an attention problem like everyone else, Linda. Yes, I do. Yes, we all do. We Admittedly all do. so. Admittedly so. Step deficit. one. Step yeah. one, you know, admit you have the I problem, do. right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, my thought was, I, I just wasn't sure if I should be sticking with say just uh you'll never know until you get that in front of eyeballs you'll never know okay. no one can answer it for you no one can answer it for you that's it full stop okay. okay yeah thank you very much yeah thank you and i think the demo is starting so if you guys want to jump over click the link don't worry i'm going to be here answering questions it's not going to hurt my feeling if you bail out if you want to go see it the link is in the chat um next up will be you marta go ahead and then caroline i'll get to you Okay, um, so I'm just beginning, um, and and therefore I do not have, as you recommended, uh, a customer list or a collector list, as you call it. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, do you do you have? Is there a, a minimal number of projects or pieces that would one. be one? One. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to know why? You want to know why? I'll just get started. I'll just get started. Uh, when I have X number of pieces. And, no, no, that, yeah. that, I, I, I yeah. get you. Yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I do have 16. Yeah, so, you're good to go. You're ready to go. Framed, unframed doesn't make a difference? No, 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 not early on. Uh, the, the frame doesn't make it or break it. Okay, good. Well, I'm paying my contractor to build them, so. It'll help you. Um, it'll, it, it'll help. It's, it's, it'll be nice for showing them. The um, finish is, yeah. And uh, I, you have all this uh, marketing data. Mm -hmm. Smaller or larger canvases do better. Again, flawed question. That you know that it, 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 it's 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 horses for courses. It's different for everybody. Everybody's kind of got their own journey. Some people do extremely well with the big ones, with the small ones, and medium size ones, off size ones. It's like everything imaginable. Okay. All right. Now the investment and all of doing this through uh, art storefronts that goes into this demo or that we're uh, jumping to. Yeah, they'll the, they'll go through. It? Yeah, it's it's essentially test driving the car. You go you get to see all the bells and whistles and go through okay. go through the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So it works. All right. Now, finally, our do you ever get the you look like? No, you look like somebody. No, you don't ever get it. Me. Yes. Me, Marta? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Who? I, I, I'm embarrassed to say. Well, and it was much younger. You, you're, well, you're significant. You're, you're, the, then the one I'm thinking about, uh, yeah. you are you are significantly younger, but you look like a young oh, Diane yes. Feinstein. Yes. Jackie? Well, Jackie, for sure. I mean, no question. But I was going to say Diane Feinstein. Uh-huh. Senator Feinstein. Does it, oh, see, Carolyn's got me. Carolyn's got me on it. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're about 25 years younger than she is, but you, 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 you remind me of her. You remind me of her. I, I don't know if that's true. Well, but, but, yeah. But, but anyway, uh, okay. So, so we should watch the vi the uh, the next Zoom meeting now with Joseph, correct? To get a demo and get more uh, information on the pricing. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you've got the time. Otherwise, you can request one and, and do one on oh, your own. Oh, I'm space. retired. I got the time. Oh, I love that. I'm I not, love that. I'm, not, I'm retired. I'm not doing my, doing my m a due diligence anymore. So. Yeah, yeah. I just love the way that you said that, though. I'm, I'm retired. So good. So good. Yeah, yeah four uh, grandkids, though. They take up my time. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations on that, by the way. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Marta. I mean, Diane. I mean, Marta. <laughs> um, okay, Carolyn, you're up next. Yeah, you got to unmute still, Carolyn. Yep, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, so I wasn't crazy. You saw it too. 
Oh, totally. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Right off the bat. Me, me too. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my question is, I want to go back to the idea that you had about the videos. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I'm not, I'm not afraid of the videos. And on Instagram, whenever I posted videos, I noticed that I get, you know, I might get two or 300 people from a, from a video posting and I might get like 60 or 80 from a, from just a, uh, you know, posting a picture with some text, right? Are you talking, you're talking, you're talking about views after the yeah. fact, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the question is, uh, when you were talking about that live stream thing, mm -hmm. that idea, mm -hmm. which sounds like a great idea, it is. Uh, but is, is, a, is that live stream, is it different than just a post on Instagram? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Oops, and I'm a little old to this whole thing, but anyway, I know something's like sometimes there's a story and there's a feed and there's a post. Yeah, I know and it's confusing. I know. What with that, what what would you do? What is that? So the live is the live is quite literally live. It's you know just think of the news, right? Like it, the the cameras are on. That person is really I'm there sure. talking. If you make a mistake. Oh, I make mistakes on them all the time, all the time, all okay. the time. Yeah. Oh, and Juan just sent me a link and he said you've got a great Instagram. Now we're, Me? Now, yep. Now we're gonna have to do show oh. and tell. Oh, thank you. Wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's me. See, I love these. These these are the photos I love, which is you have to everyone thinks that they saw a two D image, right? Or or you know, a one dimensional image, right? And so posting just stuff like this on Facebook or Instagram all the time. This is beautiful. This is awesome. But guess what? That's that that's not what goes on my wall. This is what goes on my wall. I can see it, touch it, taste it, it's tangible, right? So I, yeah. you know, I, I definitely encourage you to, to stay up with the, uh, um, with the, I like that one. Uh -huh. Ooh, are you in Southern California too? Uh, actually, um, I'm in Was? Las Vegas, Nevada, yeah. but I'm a Western artist. So I do paint, uh, you know, paint the coastal scenes, Marina. I, mm -hmm. I kind of consider Cali and Arizona and Nevada and Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Your you wheelhouse. Know, all yeah. Yeah. So definitely more of you holding the art, which, which, which I would like to see, but. You know, you've got you got you got a little follower account going on here, so it's it's pretty simple. You know, I'm freaking stuck. How long have I been at like 900? I go up to 930, then I go down to 905, and I, I can't I can't break through. So yeah. that's yeah, exploring ASF. Yeah, it's yeah. We teach you. It's not any one thing. It's a whole bunch of different things, and then doing it consistently. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will say, and you know, in agreement with you, that I want to be painting. I don't want to be really be marketing. But maybe if I get a continual kind of a flow and I make it maybe toward the end of the day versus first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. get to create going in the morning, you know, come up with some sort of discipline. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, one of the most important things is like, you also need to be poked and prodded a little bit, right? Like it's, it's, yeah. it's the whole, it's the whole, it's called cohort based learning essentially. Right. And it's like, you're learning to do all these things, but you're learning to do all these things in real time with a bunch of your peers and you see them on zoom calls like this. So imagine if, you know, we run two of these zoom calls a week, week in, week out, every single solitary week. So there's a bunch of people that are keeping you accountable to doing the work too. Right. And you're going through it with this cohort of people. And so it's like, you're not in a vacuum, right? Because you guys are all solopreneurs. That's a hard road to hoe. Right. Like you need you need some back office staff and some interns and, you know, like some water cooler talk and all the rest, like critically important. So, yeah. 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 Very good. Well, that that just uh, that answers my my question. So good. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Jen. Thank you. Hey, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Have a great weekend. OK, Mark, back to your question now. Uh, real quick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so most of the pieces that I do are usually 22 by 34. Okay. Can I offer them in like print size or do they do, do you do prints from your originals? Can you guys do that? All day. Yep. All day. Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter which size oh, sorry. they can get it, whatever size they want to. So how would that work as far as if like uh, someone orders, say I take one of my drawings and I say, I'm only going to do 20 or 25 to see how it goes like a, a, um, uh, one out of 25 or whatever mm -hmm. and they limited want a, edition. yeah limited edition mm -hmm. and they want a size 14 by 20 so how do you guys go upon doing that if i put that if i put that particular uh picture on my site how would it be turned into a print yeah well what i would say mark is you, you really just need to get the file made which we, we have an article we can put in here and like how to get that photographed um, or you could always pay a photographer to come hammer out a whole bunch in, in a day. 
or, or we have an article on how you can do it for yourself. But once you get that file, you upload that on our software and it's just going to populate all the sizes. It would be available as a print for you. Oh, gotcha. So it populates it and then it makes it all the sizes Correct. that and I it, want it to be. Yeah, it's only going to offer sizes that are based on the aspect ratio of the actual piece of art. So it's not going to let anything cut into like a standard size if it's not. Um, and then you can't always delete any sizes you don't want to offer. You, you're, you're all in total customers sizes. Mm -hmm. right. oh, I, okay. I, I wouldn't bother trying to buy like 25 out of the gate. Um, you, with it, us, it's print on demand or drop shipping. Right? Well, that's what I was saying. You know, yeah. it's, I know it's print on demand. Yeah. You so, don't need inventory. Just let them okay. buy what they want, the media they want. They can just order exactly what they're looking for. And when then someone checks out, they'll just print frame and ship it automatically to them. You don't have to do anything. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. And so then, yeah. I know that, I know that you guys had a, in there a percentage that you pay for each print or something like that? Uh, well, you pay the cost of the print to the printer. Right, which right. is like the ten percent. <laughs> well, no, no, that's just their wholesale cost, right? I got you. So, like, that's part of what's different. Well, here. They, that's what they pay when they pay for the. Yeah, it's just what the cost of the them to make the print and the frame. Okay. And then I you mark you. it up to what you want to charge. Uh -huh. So you can control your pricing, and we have an article on that too to give you some uh, idea of like pricing your art, and you can just do like a two hundred and fifty percent margin. And then our software will mark all the prices up from the cost for you. So that's super easy also. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, I lost what I was thinking about there. But yeah, it just, oh, and then we do have smaller transaction fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got you. Uh, our highest though, that is even possible is 15%. Yeah, uh, I remember you. I remember that when I was on yeah. a phone call so, with someone, they said 10 and 15% or something like that. Yeah, so it'd be 15 is the highest on a print. 10 is the highest for an original. And then, then we do have options that go down from there. But got you. for easy math, let's say you took a piece, you marked it up to a hundred bucks, then it would be like a $15 transaction for our storefronts. I got you. I got you. I got you. So, all right. Well, I just uh, wanted to know that because, you know, I wanted to see if I'm trying to, I'm trying to cut back on holding on to my originals and being able to offer the prints. But if somebody wants a custom original, then that price will be different, of course, from I want to be able to do prints for people because I know sometimes people like the prints and then my custom customers keep that list because, you know, I've already here recently, I sold three pieces to my friend and he was asking me questions about, you know, you guys about whether or not they do originals. And I said, yeah, they do originals and they do prints. So, you know, he's talking about being a part of, you know, with the, the art fronts thing. And I said, you know, I'm going to a, um, a zoom call tomorrow to see about the marketing and talk about it. Then we're going to talk about it more today. So hopefully me giving him some feedback on what I learned today will be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm getting ready to jump over to the uh, other one. Is the link in the, is the link in here? Yeah. Yeah. It's right here on the side and you'll, you'll see all the features and get an explanation for all that stuff too. All right. Well, I appreciate it guys. Thanks Patrick. Yeah. You too, Mark. Have a great Here's weekend, brother. All right, man. You guys take care. Bye. Um, okay, Roy, you've got a question again. Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, got you. Great, yeah, I know, a quick question. I don't want to take up too much. Yeah, no worries. Uh, uh, is there a way to, like, are there are groups, let's say, you know, with, of successful people on your site that you can communicate with and learn from others? who are doing it, uh, where you can a hundred percent. We have a private Facebook, oh, we have a private Facebook group for all our customers. Well, yeah, I, I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's great because you know, that's, uh, the, the, you, to shorten the, the learning curve oh, 100%. on this, 100%. Is, you know, you know, the, 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 the rad thing, the rad thing about them, the zoom sessions, you know, and it's, it's, I mean, it's essentially just this except it's with customers. Right. And somebody will get a big win you know, interior decorator ordered $35,000 worth of work and they'll post it in small wins. And then we'll see that there's like 500 comments and it's like, okay, you got to get this story in the zoom. So she'll come into the zoom or he'll come into the zoom, tell the story and everybody be like, what email copy did you use? What, what did the Facebook post look like? Can you send us it? And you know, everybody will share it and go through it and, and all the rest of it. Um, so there's that going on all the time, but not just that, like you end up becoming really good friends with, the, the fellow customers and especially the ones that resonate, you know, to what you're doing. And so, 
you know, we have a bunch of the landscape guys teamed up and they're talking all the time. We have a bunch of the commissions and the, the dude pets are teamed up and they're talking all the time. And, you know, various other different niches. Uh, we've had meetups with customers in various different parts of the world where they live. Uh, we've had an art storefronts clubhouse room formed where all our customers are in there and talking. So there's, yeah, those, those, those opportunities abound. Oh, great. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's key. It's, it's, it's totally key. And it's also what's rad about your guys' business is it's like, it's not a zero sum game, right? Like if you sell something, it doesn't mean some other artist or photographer is, is losing it. Um, and, and you know, you're, you're, you're not really in direct competition because it's just, it's, you know, it's arbitrary really at the end of the day. Um, you know, you can't price comparison shop because the pricing is completely just arbitrary and set. So there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do there. Um, yeah. Yeah, Lucia was ac asking how to take care of collectors, um, treat them like they're staying at the Thor Seasons, Lucia. Uh, put them on the Christmas card list. Like and comment on their Instagram posts. Uh, 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 send them personalized one-off emails. Send them text messages. Uh, 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 invite them to things. You know, it's no different than how you would how you would take care of any high-value person you have in your life. And boy, let me tell you, do not ever underestimate the subtle psychology of reciprocation. Extremely powerful. Everyone loves being treated like they're at a you know, behind the velvet ropes, right? You know, what, you know, what's my favorite analogy? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you treat your collector list? Okay. You ever flown coach? Joseph, you ever flown coach? Absolutely. It was a rhetorical question, Joseph. All of us have flown coach. Okay. Who boards the plane first? Not coach. Not coach. It's, it's first class. Okay. And then what happens when first class gets in there? They close the ropes. Okay. You're not getting that beverage service. Okay. You're not going up and using that bathroom. You're kind of looking in there to see if there's any popular people in there. Treat your collector list like they're first class, right? All of us in coach want to be up there. I want to be in those big seats, right? I want the champagne in that nice little glass, right? I want the special meal, right? I want my own private bathroom and, and direct service. That's that's how you want your collectors to feel, right? And and, and when everyone else sees your collectors, that's how that's that's how they want to be perceived. So it's a good little analogy to, to how you think about it. I actually just recorded something. I don't know if it's up yet. April, April, will you get the link and throw it in the chat? I just, uh, we have a show. It's um live broadcast, right, Carolyn? Because I have to eat my own dog food, okay? I have my own live show, thank you very much. Um, and April just put the link in the chat. It's a really good episode, actually. And it's quite literally uh, your collector list and how to think about it and how important it is. Recommend you guys watch it. It's totally free. It's on YouTube. Um, it's a good one. I got a lot of really good feedback on that one, actually. Um, just recorded it yesterday, too. So it's fresh. It's fresh content. <sighs> We're running out of gas. I feel like I've been talking for too long. Um, any other final questions, guys, um, while you've got us here? Um, could be about just about anything, uh, what, whatever it might be. Um, otherwise, great weekends, all. Thanks for, thanks for sitting through the, the presentation, hearing me yap. Um, on and on and on about this, that, and the other. Um, any final remarks? Mark, are you raising your hand again? I can't tell. Yep, he is. Okay, go ahead. Hey, so Tom. Joseph, can you put the uh, Joseph? Can you put the chat, the uh, link to the to the other um, Zoom in the chat meeting yeah. in the chat box? Yeah, for sure. Here, I'll drop it in here again. Let All right, thank you. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Thank. Yep. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, Tom. I see you raising your hands. Um, Nivtida, I gotta find her. Where are you? I'm gonna unmute you right now, Nivtida. Tell me about this page. Hi. Hi. Um, so I have a, a Facebook page. So mm -hmm. and I have like um, eight thousand followers. And now, you know, I, I basically I wasn't present in, on this page, mm -hmm. not active at all for maybe like three years. And mm -hmm. now it's pretty much um, whatever I post. Mm -hmm. And it's just like zero, zero feedback, zero, yep. Yep. you know, yep. response. It's it's very really like acting weird, and I'm just I'm just wondering what's actually happening. Should I create a new page? No, absolutely not. Ab absolutely not. So what's happening is you had a plant, and you stopped watering it, and I'm sorry, the plant has died. The good news is, is the root system is still intact. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to pour a whole bunch of water on it to resuscitate it and bring it back to life. Okay. So one post is not going to light up the world, but if you start posting regularly and consistently, then it will resuscitate it and bring it back to life. Also, because it's a pretty high follower count, 
the last thing I want you to do is jettison that because there's good social proof and the fact that you have that many followers. I mean, did you did you earn the followers or did we buy followers? Uh, Don't lie to me. I had advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the, my brand has changed completely. Yeah. That's the thing. And now I am uh, more, mostly advertising the, those kind of... Uh, mm -hmm. The, this kind of the paintings all on canvas mm -hmm. beautiful and um the previous was absolutely like opposite in the digital art and and i don't think that those even even who see that they wouldn't respond to to my classical art you know but don't outsmart your audience you don't know you don't know until you're actually getting feedback until they say and how do i say your name by the way is don't know don't tell me don't tell me nevita 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 take a tiktok on it Nivita. You can call me Nevi. Okay. I'm gonna call you Nevi. I'm gonna call you Nevi. Okay, I'm gonna call you Nevi. Um, don't don't make assumptions. Don't ever don't ever think you're smarter than your audience. None of us are smarter than our audience. Let our audience tell you, right? Like it's like don't create a problem that you don't have. It's like, well, you know, if I sell these, everyone's gonna everyone's gonna tell me that that it doesn't. It's not framed, so I'm not gonna be able to sell them. How do you know? Wait until somebody mm -hmm. says I'm not buying it without a frame, and then you've got a problem, right? So. You know, mm -hmm. your, your audience very well might have just been into you. You never know. So start posting. Let's start putting some water. Okay. I have so much more engagement. Putting some water on that thing. What? I have much more engagement in my personal uh, Facebook page. Of course you do. People of course you asking, do. But, but when I actually share to my, um, you know, business account, mm -hmm. like zero. <laughs> yes. Trust me. I know. That also has to do with the fact that, like, you know, when you were super active on that page was probably back in the day mm -hmm. when Facebook would organically show your post to a whole heck of a lot more people. Yeah. That party's over. That party's over. It's pay to play now on Facebook. There's within reason, there's some other things you can do uh, to increase it, but just start posting. Don't overthink it. You don't have a Facebook page problem right now. You have a not oh. posting consistently problem. I have a marketing. Problem. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> we all do. We all do. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Stevie. Thank in time, I will learn that first name, be able to pronounce it without hacking it. But on a Friday, my brain is scrambled. It's the end of the week. I'll get it, though. I'll get it, though, Um, Go ahead, Tom. I thought I unmuted you, Tom. Are you there? Oh. Tom, I can't hear you. You got to figure out your unmute situation. Camera's working, but audio's not. Did you get it? Yeah, you got it. One, two, three? Yep, you got it. Yep, okay. Um, my question was, I asked you, uh, the last time we were on, mm -hmm. uh, about, uh, putting on more than one category of art and, yep. uh, and what I want to do is put on my photography, mm -hmm. which was almost all done in the seventies and early seventies into the late, to yep. the early eighties. <laughs> and, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get back into it now, but. I'm on countdown, so <laughs> uh, that could be a little difficult. What I have is I have the second largest collection of, of uh, original comic strip art in the in the state of North Carolina. Okay. And uh, here's one example. I don't know how to. Yeah, it's really cool looking. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, let's see. It almost looks like it's floating on the page. It's cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. What's Sorry, up, Doc? I'm not able to. Little Elmer Fudd. No, I see it. Okay, but I, I, there's this one is a um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, hmm. Let's see. This one's a um, a movie cell, but I also have. What does that mean, the, movie cell? Uh, when when a movie is done, they, it's done with like I don't know, five, ten, twenty, thirty thousand um, movie cells. And they just put them together, and there, there's your cartoon. Got it. And so uh, those are those are those are that's why it looks like it's floating on the canvas. So it's that's like a physical film frame, essentially. That, that, basically, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can get it a little closer. I can't see. But no, we can see it. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Okay. And um, you got the, you got the whole you got the whole gang there. All right. And um, some of them are worth like, you know, 20 or $30. And like this one's worth seven or 800. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say.
got back from my VA meeting and I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a basket case right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do want to, so as far as doing this, it's, uh, acceptable or is it unusual or is it, uh, out of the ordinary? No, you could, you could sell all of that stuff, but I do have one serious question. Okay. Okay. How do you know that that's the second biggest collection in North Carolina? Uh, I was told that in the 1990s. In the 1990s. Uh, I, I was very active. Uh, I was a member of the, uh, the National Cartoonist Society. And um, uh, got, I got that from, quote unquote, a very high level expert. <laughs> okay. Well, unless we, took all, unless we took all of the pieces and we, we me measured them in the line and saw which stack was bigger, I think you should just say you're the number one. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I could be number one. Look, that's no a little problem. charcoal gray area between the two of us, but I would just take it. Well, I, I, I was in the nightclub business for 20 years, uh, yeah. actually 40. And uh, I, you uh, understand declared, I declared myself the number three uh, rock and roll nightclub in the South. Oh, and, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't been to Vegas in a while, but you know how it's voted the best steakhouse in Vegas? They can say that. Who yeah. voted? No one knows yeah. who voted. As long yeah, as somebody exactly. voted that it's the best steakhouse, then it's the best steakhouse in Vegas. Complete nonsense, right? Well, the good the good news was that uh, I was in a in a list in in Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, for the best nightclubs in the South, and the name of my nightclub was the Attic, and it was listed in alphabetical order. <laughs> yep, yep. So, easy to say there. What uh, uh, now? The fact that I'm limited in my uh, photography mm -hmm. in terms of it's all done, um, you know, in a time frame of the seventies and early eighties, mm -hmm. um, uh, that uh, create a problem with marketing or no, that... not at all, not at all. You don't have time. You don't have time contemplating, uh, uh, uh marketing issues, right? You, you, you just need to get going. Yep. Uh, That's absolutely. It. And, um, <clears throat> and, um, I uh, had something else to say and I forgot what it was. And I'll have to catch it at the next meeting then. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, no worries. There's going to be plenty of them. Um, but thanks, Tom. Appreciate appreciate you showing up. You have a you have a great weekend, huh? You too. Bye bye. Okay, Joseph, I'm out of gas. Unless you got any finals, I think we leave it there. Yeah. Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>